If you've spent any amount of time researching or partaking in the terrarium and vivarium hobbies, then you've likely heard of springtails. Springtails, otherwise known as columbola, are small, soft-bodied arthropods that grow anywhere from 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch long depending on the species. Not only do they range in size, but they also range in shape and color from black to white and even bright colors. They are found in areas of high moisture and organic debris including soil, leaf litter, lichen, bark, decaying plant matter, and rotting wood. Springtails can be found in moist places around and in homes as well. Don't get worked up though, they are totally harmless. They won't bite or sting, and they won't damage anything. Further, the presence of springtails indoors is likely the result of a larger moisture issue. Remove the source of the problem and the springtails will quickly disappear. Springtails can't fly, but they sure can jump. Their name, springtail, is derived from a structure called the furcula. The furcula is located under the abdomen and allows them to spring up into the air when threatened. A springtail can jump several inches into the air using this structure, which is incredible considering their size. There are many reasons why this animal is highly regarded among terrarium and vivarium hobbyists. Likewise, anyone who wants to get serious with their hobby should really consider cultivating these animals. Springtails can also be used to feed small animals such as dart frogs and even surface eating fish because they float on water. One of the most notable features about the springtail that makes them ideal for terrariums is their diet. They feed on mold, fungi, pollen, algae, and decaying matter, most of which can easily become problem areas for a terrarium. The introduction of springtails makes these issues a thing of the past. That's why springtails are one of the key components to a bioactive setup. In short, when a terrarium or vivarium is referred to as being bioactive, this means that it has a biological effect. In other words, a natural decomposition cycle like that found in nature is occurring thanks to these little critters. The things listed prior and even animal excrement are eaten by springtails and other microfauna and then released into the substrate in the form of nutrients. This not only cleans the terrarium, but it also fertilizes it. Other common animals that are included in bioactive setups include isopods and earthworms. Bioactivity is largely implemented into naturalistic setups for amphibians and reptiles of all kinds. This makes it so that you really never have to clean the animal's enclosure. That's because the setup not only looks like nature, but it acts like nature as well. Finally, bioactivity produces healthier and more natural enclosures, which in turn produces healthier and happier animals. Caring for and cultivating springtails is pretty simple. Here's the very first culture of springtails that I bought for $15 about 7 years ago. It's still in the original container with the original charcoal medium. I've been seeding terrariums and vivariums with it this whole time, but only recently have I began to expand it into more cultures. Even though these are a temperate species, they easily adapt to the tropical environment of a terrarium. This single culture has produced all of these cultures and more. The point is that it's extremely inexpensive and easy to expand a single culture to create more springtails than you could ever need. First, let's discuss how to properly keep springtails. You will need a somewhat shallow container that closes tightly. Anything like what you see here will work perfectly. Next, you will need a proper medium. You can use one of the following, lump wood charcoal, horticultural charcoal, bonfire coals, or activated carbon. Activated carbon and horticultural charcoal work well, but are not cost effective. Bonfire coals work very well, but it's tough to get a high volume of them. However, you can only use bonfire coals if no catalysts were used to start the fire. Further, it must also be rinsed thoroughly before use with hot water. The best and most cost effective medium is lump wood charcoal. Yes, the kind sold in the barbecue section. You can get a 15 pound bag at your local hardware store for $13. This can make a ton of springtail cultures and you can even do some grilling in the process. The only downside is that it comes in relatively large pieces, which means that you have to break it up. Make sure to wear a respirator and glasses when doing so. I usually just dump it into a cardboard box and hammer away. You could also use a pillowcase or some other sort of bag to do this. Pieces around this size work well because they provide an optimal amount of surface area for your springtails. If desired, you can rinse the charcoal using some form of purified water. This is not necessary though. 
Also, you can use the charcoal leftovers for your terrarium's charcoal layer, or mix it into your substrate so that nothing goes to waste. Now that you have selected your container and your medium, it's time to get your culture started. Start by setting some pieces of charcoal into your container like so. You can shake the container slightly to get the charcoal to distribute itself. After doing so, pour about a half inch to one inch of water into your container depending on the size. Usually less is more because you're probably not going to make a giant culture. Finally, it's time to add your springtails. Although it is possible to cultivate springtails from the wild, it's not worth the trouble. You might as well spend a couple of bucks and get a starter culture online. Once you've obtained a culture, it's time to propagate your springtails. There are a couple of ways that you can transfer springtails into new cultures. You can do one of the following. Tip the container until they jump into the new culture. Add additional water into the existing culture and pour this water out into the new culture. The floating springtails will then be dispersed into their new home. Get a turkey baster and suck up some springtails and then disperse them into your new culture. If you're trying to make a larger culture, simply dump this entire starter culture into a larger container. Now that your new springtail cultures are seeded, all that you need to do is feed them. More or less you have two options, nutritious yeast, or uncooked rice. I prefer to use uncooked long grain rice because it lasts a long time. If you use rice, you will notice that mold grows on it in a few days. No worries, your springtails will happily feed on this. The size and production of your culture would dictate how frequently you have to add more food. A good rule of thumb is to monitor your culture and simply add more food as necessary. It is also recommended that you open your cultures regularly to prevent carbon dioxide buildup. I only open my cultures when feeding or checking on production. This seems to be sufficient enough, but if you want to open your culture more than that, feel free. Finally, new cultures will be ready for use in about 2-4 to four weeks. Established cultures can be used weekly if production is high. When using your springtails for whatever purpose, never use the entire culture. Always leave some springtails so that they can reproduce. It's best if you have at least two cultures so that you can use one and leave the other on deck. Then alternate which one you are using. Your new springtail culture will last for years if you properly take care of it. Finally, let's discuss how to seed a terrarium with springtails. This process is very similar to how your new culture was created. Here's your options. Tip the container until they jump into their new home. Add additional water into the culture and pour the water out into the terrarium. Get a turkey baster and suck up some springtails and then disperse them into the terrarium. Dump some of or an entire culture into the terrarium before adding the substrate. This will seed your terrarium with springtails and add the charcoal layer at the same time. Springtails are tiny critters that do more than just hop around. They are a crucial element to a bioactive terrarium or vivarium, which is one of the reasons that they are largely popular among hobbyists. Springtails are also extremely easy to culture, and the initial cost to start a few cultures is pretty low. You're looking at roughly a one-time investment of $40 for all of the necessary materials. These little springtails will pay for themselves a hundred times over. Tired of mold or algae building up in your terrariums, or want to create a bioactive setup? Then get yourself some springtails.